Marcus Conti reporting on Black Friday. Black smoke still rising above Nietzsche's Texas where the explosion happened, you heard? Chemical explosions still roaring down there, evacu- evacuations and everything. So let's take a look at this. Uh, domestic terrorism still not ruled out. 48 hours later, the fire is still burning. They have to wait for the fire to go out before they can investigate what caused the fire. We have our, we have our, I guess I'll call it primary suspect, a suspect incitement, inciting and or, and or drove a drone and tried to blow, blow up some tanks. We'll find out. We'll look very carefully at the uh, evidence on the ground so far, and we'll look at the, the potential suspect in depth. So here's um, ABC reporting. Four miles of a burning chemical plant forced to spend this holiday away from their homes. New video of the first explosion at the plant captured by a doorbell camera. You see it right there. Nearly 48 hours later, the fire is still raging as authorities closely monitor the air. Here's ABC's Will Carr. Tonight, firefighters are dousing a massive fire at that southeast Texas chemical plant that's been burning since early Wednesday morning. Late today, local officials pledging significant progress has been made in the battle to extinguish those flames. The situation is improving, but we are not completely out of the woods yet. The initial explosion injured three workers. The blast caught on camera inside a coffee shop. You can see a bright light flash just before the massive explosion blew out doors and windows across the area. All of a sudden, I heard a big crash, big boom. And didn't know what it was, and then all of a sudden, a split second later, the glass and windows come flying in the bedroom. Then hours later, a second blast, causing a steel tower to shoot out of those hellish flames, then torpedo down towards the ground. There's a mandatory four-mile evacuation, forcing tens of thousands of residents to flee from their homes for Thanksgiving, packing up and leaving. I just worry about what we're breathing in. Tonight, instead of celebrating, they're wondering when they'll be able to return home. Authorities say they're keeping a close eye out on the air quality, and while they won't be able to find out what caused this fire until they get it out, they say tonight one thing is for sure, it is a miracle that nobody was killed. Will Carr for us tonight. Will, thank you. So there you go. He said it. uh, 48 hours later, fire still raging, three employees injured. A four-mile radius has been evacuated around the plant, and they won't know... Uh, what caused it until they put the fire out? Right. So let's look at let's look at the um, a little more in depth. Jefferson County officials give update on TPC fire burning in Port Niches. So these are the same characters that uh, ABC just covered. Let's listen. I don't know if that answers your question or not. Uh, no, it does. It does. Yeah. And the other question I had was I oh. know it's still early on, um, but is there any idea as to what could have caused this? No, uh, I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let TPC answer that question. I, I I don't get him. I just protect the citizen. That was a no. <laughs> they do not know what caused it. Uh, Forty eight hours later, and let them get into their. Yeah, I'm just gonna say no. There's no idea right now, uh, nor are we concerned with that. There's gonna be ample time after the fire is suppressed to uh, study the cause and to ensure that our community is safe in the future and that it never happens again. Uh, and, and that certainly will be the focus of our energies at the appropriate time, but now it's not that time. Our focus now is suppression, getting families back in their home. Our, our, uh, our mission objectives have not changed. Number one, protect the lives of our citizens. Number two, protect our environment. Number three, suppress the fire. None of them None of our operational objectives at this point are to determine the cause of the event. That'll be our next objective. I have a question for Troy. I'm not the TPC. There's a lot of... Um, oh, I always, always also want to mention, after the mayor's comments, TPC has done a great job through their personnel. They're subject matter experts on the tank farms. They're subject matter experts on the processing units. But they have been aided, supported, uh, and propped up by our local firemen mm-hmm. from all the cities and the plants. It's, they've done an amazing job. Mm-hmm. So my question to you was, I know this is a difficult time in responding, of course, everything that's happening, but there's a lot of reports online, certainly, about past violations the plant has had over the past few years. Um, online, there's just a lot of reports, you know, pointing fingers about past violations and possibly the 
this being a cumulation of you know those types of violations. What's your response to the you know general public that is looking online for answers as to why this may have happened? So the the question is about a uh, weak target, a weak target in my view. The question was, uh, are there there are violations? There are significant violations at the plant, which means that if there's leaks of some sort or it's old equipment, it uh, opens itself up. I, I would say too, if we're looking at domestic terrorism, a weak target. So <clears throat> again, uh, let me get to the first part of the question uh, regarding the past violations. I uh, personally can't speak to that. I'm not. Uh, in plant management there, I'm in, in the corporate office. Um, I can get someone to follow back up with you regarding details uh, for those violations. Um, <clears throat> going back to cause, uh, I'm gonna echo what was said before. Our focus right now is containment and ultimately uh, ending this event, um, including <clears throat> getting folks back into their homes and resuming their normal lives. Life safety <clears throat> tends, I'm sorry, not tends, life safety remains our focus in this event. Seems a little nervous, doesn't he? It always has and will continue to remain a tenant of our approach as we're trying to get this resolved. I do want to share, <clears throat> we've gotten a lot of credit. And <clears throat> oh, shit. Oh, damn, I blew the spot, man. I blew the spot. Hold on, let me get back there. Sorry about that. I'm sorry. I got carried away. You to remain a tenant of our approach as we're trying to get this resolved. I do want to share, <clears throat> we've gotten a lot of credit, and I can't allow TPC to take all the credit. Um, this has been a unified approach. Um, we've had over, we currently have over 20 local, state, and federal agencies aiding in the. 20 local, federal, and state vote. 20, lo what did he say? Local, federal, and state agencies. 20. This event, that's 20 separate entities that are helping us resolve this issue. And we could not be successful without the support of everyone involved. So there you go. So they have, I would, you'd have to assume, I, I hope they have uh, DHS and uh, FBI since they've been informed of the possibility of a drone strike down there. So... So, Marcus Conti reporting on what is working theory. Why is it working theory? Because this reporter was stalked by someone with a fantasy, a dream, a deep-seated dream of framing others flying a drone with a torch, with a, with a flamethrower on it, over LNG G tanks, igniting them, and then <clears throat> blaming somebody else for the charge, so blaming somebody else for the thing. That's what we're dealing with, right? <clears throat> and as a reporter, this individual that, would, that, that I've already mentioned in three other videos is, shows, the, shows the pattern of a serial stalker where he's making 30, 50 hit pieces on this reporter and other people involved in his insane delusional story that he publishes, that he published on his uh, YouTube page. Now, this per this person also this is George, D. George Schwaggert, Dave Acton, Dave Schwaggert, had uh, filed. If you follow this channel, you know he filed a lawsuit against Jason Goodman. That's the other guy in his fantasy, the the guy who owned the guys, the guy from New York who owns the drone company, is Jason Goodman. I, that's who he's suing. He's currently suing right now. So he has this fantasy of maybe framing the guy he's suing, the reporter who, I don't know, talked about it maybe, and uh, uh, another woman, uh, Denise Matow, who also talked about it and also says, hey, this guy's crazy. This guy's a stalker. And he weaves it into a story, into a narrative where, where he maybe confesses that that's what he's up to. Right? And there's more. There's more. So let's just read a little bit of the lawsuit. So this is a summary judgment issued by a federal judge in the Southern District of New York. The Southern District of New York, he files a lawsuit against Jason Goodman, and the summary judgment is as such. Valerie Caprione, United States District Judge, quote, 
This is a frivolous dispute between two litigants whose voluminous court filings rehash their incomprehensible and illogical online conspiracy theories. Uh, it also goes on to talk about um, the judge frames Mr. Uh, Schwaggert as a uh, seizing, seeing himself as a knight in shining armor, someone who's going to fly in and save the day with his, vol- with his crazy ideas, right? Crackpot theories, she uses. Crackpot ideas are some of the things in this, uh, in this summary judgment. Now, the judge also did something, I guess, extraordinary, where she left the door open for Swagger to refile at a lower level, in a magistrate level, what I suspect to hang himself, right? Because obviously the, the case is this judge already delivered a summary judgment saying that it's a frivolous dispute, right? And for a lower magistrate judge to overrule that is not going to happen, right? But nonetheless, uh, Swaggart is still pursuing it at this time, I believe. And uh, it is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's give him the rope, let him hang himself, right? So here he is. This is Mrs. Swaggart, uh, suspect number one. And let's listen to his, let's listen to his delusion Oh, you know what? Before we do that, there's one other part of it. So he goes, Mr. Mr. Acton, Mr. Swagger also has a, what looks like a frivolous website. I mean, look, freedom of the press, you could do whatever you want. But here's a site. And if you look at the URL, we know it's confirmed that this is Swagger. It's just one page. It's not a, it's not a, you know, a bona fide website. I guess it is a website. But it seems to be like a WordPress blog, one guy with these insane delusional fantasies about blowing things up, about how others are conspiring to get him all along while he's he's actively stalking reporters, actively stalking innocent people. All documented, all I mean I, I have it. I the stuff the stuff that I've that I have I've already turned over to the FBI. But let's look at this. Let's look at what we have here. So Manhattan Federal Court Review. Oh, this must be pretty official. What, is, what happens when you hit on it? Oh, you come right back to here. So he's, he's, he's presenting himself as a SDNY, Southern District of New York News, with a, with a shopping cart, and it looks all so official, right? Analysis of pending legal actions of interest in New York City. And what do we have here? What do we have here? Where is the start page? You can't even get to the real page. Oh, yeah. So look. So here we go. So insane. <laughs> insane in you insane insane in Ukraine. I don't know what the hell he's talking about there. Here, look. Oh, he's talking about LNG tanks in Corpus Christi, Texas. He's talking about uh, an article about the woman that he's stalking in Texas, Denise Matow, an investigative journalist in Corpus Christi, Texas. That's who he weaved into his delusional story. Corpus Christi uh, unofficial terror watch list for LNG drone threat. Let's look at that one. So here he is. He's talking about this after the fact, right? After, because the, the incident happened on the twenty. Fifth? When did the when did the when did the actual incident happen? <laughs> I'm losing track of the date. But let's just look. Nonetheless, he's got this this article up, and he gives an opinion. The explosion in Port Nietzsche, Texas, has raised awareness of the devastation such industrial in accidents cause. Right, and he gives and there's a picture of there it is. It's a drone with a freaking flamethrower on it. Right. He's got a drone. He's got a drone with a flamethrower on it. There it is. That's the image on his page. A drone. Fly, it's like a it's like a flying book of matches. Right? That's what's on his front. That's what's on his homepage. So let's look at the um, let's listen to the delusion again, right? Directed at this reporter and another reporter in te- uh, in Texas and another three reporters. 
right? He's 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 targeting he's targeting investigative reporters. Marcus Conti, Denise Matow, Jason Goodman. <laughs> this is perfect. You know, I had this really crazy dream. It was really super crazy. So there was this lady in Corpus Christi, and she was all upset and anti-government because her daughter was murdered and it was never investigated. See, this is a movie plot. It's called Corpus Christi. Corpus Crispy. That's the name of the movie. So she's putting out all this stuff on social media about how much she hates the government. And there's these two jerks in New York City, and one used to own a drone company, and the other was a disgruntled worker for a trash company. Anybody who knows Swagger, he's admitted that this is him, by the way. There's no, that's not disputable. There's another video in social media where he, where he talks about this particular video, how everybody's so overreacting about what I said. So confirm that it is him. Confirming, he, he could say, oh, that's just uh, speculation. It's just hypothetical and theoretical that these people have a likeness of character. No, it's very clear that I work for the Department of Sanitation. He said just, you know, in his uh, threatening um, videos that I was a disgruntled employee. And Goodman, who he's suing, it, uh, apparently owned both of us who live in New York City, you know, uh, has said that it apparently owns a drone company. So th those characters are indisputable. And so they kind of picked up on her. These two guys made a lot of videos together. They hang out with each other. They shop together. That's total, that's total delusional nonsense, right? Shop together. I don't know the guy. I know Jason Goodman because I was on his show twice. And we, had a, we almost had a fist fight the last time we saw each other in the street uh, uh, a few months ago at the Epstein trial. And so they said, hey, we could exploit her. We could exploit her. This was just in the dream. It was a dream. And so, I'm like, how do you want to exploit her? Well, the LNG, liquid natural gas tankers, go right by her house in Corpus Christi. They go right by her house. And these two guys are thinking to themselves, we could go down there and kind of hold her hostage and use her house as a command post. And I know it gets pretty bizarre thinking about somebody like Denise. I mean, she's a cutout. I'm not saying it is Denise. This is hypothetical, theoretical. Any similarity to any real people is purely coincidental. But can you imagine her tied up in a chair with a handkerchief around her mouth going, Rrrr, with all these cockroaches call, crawling all over her? Just because you say that it's a dream and it, it doesn't pertain to real people is not exoneration from guilt. I, you don't. You can't just say, "Oh, this is hypothetical," and then you paint a very descriptive picture of three reporters uh, involved in a conspiracy to blow up a, a, a port. Right? It's not. You can't do that. Man, I mean, this isn't. This is what's called incitement. If you're actually there, if it turns out that his truck was in corp, you know, in in the Texas area at the time, well, then it's then it's uh, pick him up. Uh. Pick them up time. Uh, the audience would just be shrieking, right? So one of these guys brings his drone down that has a flamethrower on it. And if you look on eBay, you can buy flamethrower drones. So what they do is when this tanker's coming and they have these little towers on it, the drone flies out and goes to the control tower. It freaks out the pilot and he runs the ship aground. He just steers out of the way because the flame frightens him because if there's any vapors around those LNG tanks, boom. It's three mile instant destruction. If this thing goes up, oh, let's take a look at the rest of the... It's all gonna get cleaned up, folks. It's all gonna get cleaned up. Anyway, if an LNG tanker goes up for three miles, everything's gone. Now, if there's no explosion, the cloud the gas cloud will kill everything for a mile and a half. So if this thing was a mile and a half to the command post, or that would be the cockroach, cockroach headquarters. If that's a mile and a half away, just the gas alone would kill all the cockroaches. Isn't that a strange dream? It was a dream. It was a very strange dream. Who are these two guys? 
And why would they want to fly a drone with a flamethrower? And why does this guy from the trash company being so nice to this lady? It's because they want to use her house as a command post. That's what's going on, folks. It's a dream. It's a dream. I think... It's disturbing, right? It's very disturbing, right? There's other. There's one other part I wanted to point out here too. So, in the in the in the behavior of stalking, right? In the spirit of stalking, Mister uh, Swaggart has also not only uh, stalked Denise Matow, but if you go down the list, he's publishing. It seems that he's publishing articles. Here you go. Crowdsource court jester Marcus Conti too lazy to sue. I, so he's he's pointing, I don't know what this is, but he's pointing to me as well in his delusional fake website trying to draw, it, it actually impersonating a Southern District of New York, the abbreviations for a court, a federal court. He's trying to steer traffic, apparently, away from the web to his delusional fantasies of, you know, Bombs over, you know, so he's the the shite in the the shite, the the knight in shining armor. So, so his story has has it has um, it it's disturbing. It really is. It has kidnapping, it, it tying up a, a woman in Corpus Christi, a journalist. It has it has two other journalists uh, implicated in kidnapping and orchestrating a command post to blow up a port city. All, right? All authorities have been notified. Again, if you watch the previous videos, FBI has been notified of the, the, the actual video of himself. There's also more social media recordings of him saying in his own words that he, this was brought to my attention, that he um, believes that the FBI, he doesn't care because the FBI already has 600 pages on him already. His brother was an implicated in the um, explosion, the, the uh, hoax bomb in the port of Charleston on the Mersk, Memphis back in 2017. And there is allegations, I didn't follow the story very closely because I think it's stupid, but there is allegations that, again, the knight in shining armor, Mr. Acton, came in and ultimately was... Uh, implicated in that situation uh, uh, as well as being p possibly a co-conspirator in a hoax. That was a hoax. This is real. Real flames on the ground. So, Marcus Conte reporting. Wow. How about it? Do we Are we on to something? Again, talk me down. Are we on to something? Is this the biggest mistake in the world? Or well, what? But what we have to do now, we have to wait until the good folks down in corp in uh in Port Nietzsche's, uh, find out what the hell happened, right? Because if we find a drone and we find a, a, a flamethrower bought on eBay in that pile of rubbish, if there's any indication whatsoever, it hasn't, if it hasn't been incinerated, then we have our suspect. We have our, we have a, an interesting suspect. So, so Mark Scott reporting this, this individual is continuing stalking activity. He's continuing to, to, weave videos i'm told with my name in it he's still sending junk email all right he's still he's still stalking after all is said and done stalking behavior continuing okay marcus conte reporting 